you've watched any fighting game or Smash tournaments lately, you might have noticed something interesting. What's with all the buttons? Actually, what's with the controllers that are only buttons? For as long as mankind has been locked into competition, people have wanted to customize their gear. From specialty running shoes to the perfect guitar rig, fighting game players are no different. And while custom controller aesthetic is one thing, what's with all the controllers that are only buttons? If you're unfamiliar with the FGC or fighting game community, you should know that fighting games came from the arcade. And since the early days of fighting games were dominated by arcade cabinets, the first at-home controllers were designed to emulate that experience, and these are what we call fight sticks. Eventually, from fight sticks, we got the first controller layout designed by Hitbox. This style is also known as the leverless controller. These all button controllers do away with the stick of the fight stick and replace them with even more buttons. It's like a keyboard, but made out of arcade parts. And after a while, Smash players took a look across the venue hall and decided to copy that and made all button GameCube controllers of their own. Yes, this is a GameCube controller. But why would anybody want these? And if you do want one, what kind should you even get? Let's start with why. Point number one, strictly speaking, these are just optimal. The precision a leverless controller affords the user is unmatched. Any accidental flubs or misinputs are squarely down to the user. You never have to worry about stick drift or a loose dead zone or in Smash, not quite hitting the right angle. A side note, in Smash, these kind of controllers usually aren't called leverless and have instead been colloquially, colloquially? instead have been called rectangles or box controllers. Different name, different community. Now, there's a whole new learning curve, especially with those smash angles, but the precision this affords you, getting the exact same input every time, is enormous. In platform fighters, you're usually trading more options for precise options, which has some pros and cons. I personally think it's well worth it. But in traditional fighters that already use just eight directions, it's strictly a plus. And if up being below your other directional buttons feels a little weird for your brain, just think of it as jump instead. Now, I already know the nerds out there are typing, yeah, but what about SOCD and input shortcuts? Boxes are way too good. We need to deal with this. Great points. Important to talk about for high level play. This video just isn't for you. This video is not for you. I'm just gonna talk about why Leverless exists in the first place and why I think they're real cool. These controllers don't break nearly as often because there's less moving parts. It's basically an ongoing joke in the Melee community that top players have to replace their controllers every three months because something breaks or they need to get something fixed or repaired. But there's some truth to that because sticks are by far the most susceptible weak point on any pad controller. It's where dead zones are. It's the most common moving analog part. And if you're traveling to a tournament where you're regularly packing your stuff into a suitcase or throw it in your backpack, the chance of any malfunction just keeps going up. Leverless, on the other hand, have much fewer moving parts. There's no sticks with dead zones or drift to worry about. And if you throw it in your bag, at most, some buttons are gonna be pressed instead of your control stick being smashed to the side of your bag the entire time. And there's no reason to remove a ball top like you would on a regular fight stick. You just throw it in, slide it, forget. Most leverless controllers are designed with arcade quality buttons. The things that are designed for a 12 year old on a sugar high on his birthday to smash all day long. And the ones that aren't made with the arcade quality buttons are usually designed after keyboards with, you know, mechanical switches. Guess what? These are still rated to over 50 million presses. They're gonna last a long time as long as you take care of them. One more throw! One more it, throw! Over the knee! One more throw! A very special contender here. Oh, no. Oh. A custom box. A custom box. We've got Yingling saying no. Box retails for $200. Yingling saying no, I'm saying yes. It retails for $200. Yes. Retail. Oh! Yeah! Oh! oh 
my god! The only reason I switched which kind of box I used was because of the form factor I wanted. Had nothing to do with the actual quality or if it was still working. My old controllers are still here, they still work pristine. I just wanted a different shape. I've actually saved a bunch of money compared to how often I used to have to repair a regular GameCube controller. Plus, you get the fun clicky noises. I didn't switch to a rectangle for any of those reasons, though. The third big reason, hand health and accessibility. I switched because I started dealing with intense hand pain up and down my arm. When you're playing on a controller or even gripping a fight stick, your hands are tensed up. And it's actually even easier to compound the matter if you're sitting with bad posture or you're more tense in a stressful moment, or even just using a weird grip style to hit certain tech. By flattening out the controller and putting it on your lap, a leverless controller tends to force you to sit with better posture. It relaxes your hands. You're not gripped so tightly, even when you are tense, because let's face it, fighting game tournaments can be stressful. There's no way around it. Rectangles are far more ergonomic and better for your hands. It's still not perfect, and it doesn't work for everybody, but a lot of folks physically can't play on controller or pad anymore. If they ever could at all, I would be retired if I wasn't able to play on a rectangle now. Leverless controllers are a huge accessibility thing and enable a ton of people to enjoy fighting games that otherwise wouldn't be able to, and I, I think that's beautiful. All right, I sold you on it. Now, what kind should you get? Well, first, look at all the different kinds of leverless controllers there are. You've got the OG, but then there's all these different sizes, from sitting an entire arcade cabinet down on your lap to having something the size of a credit card. And then there's different layouts. You don't like up being on your thumb below the other directions? Try a WASD style layout. What if you like your mechanical keyboard at home and you want to emulate that? Change the switches or get something that's a totally different style. There Ooh. it is, the prison. Oh, what the hell is that? Maybe you do want the arcade song ones. Oh my God, the Smash versions have so many buttons. Why are there so many buttons? Anyways, you want to make your purchase based on your preferences. Some people really like the big chunky controllers that have heft and feel solid. I really wanted to prioritize travel because I go to a lot of events. I used to have one bag that was just my two box controllers and I just didn't want to deal with that anymore. I've gone with ones that are as small as I could and my back thanks me for it later while I'm traveling in the airport. You might not be the same way. Or maybe you just want something that's good, solid all around that's in the middle. There's a number of places that are making leverless controllers for fighting games, ranging from your bespoke local modders that can make you a totally custom piece of hardware to top of the line game controller manufacturers you've already heard of, like Razer or Victrix. For fighting games, a few companies to check out that I can vouch for quality on are Hitbox, which is the OG, they started this thing, Junk Food Arcades, who make controllers of a bunch of different sizes but tend to be ultra customizable aesthetically, and Paradise Arcade Shop with the Empress, or my favorite, the Empress Nano. Not to mention, like I said, hundreds of other smaller shops, companies, or even Etsy manufacturers. You just gotta do some research. For platform fighters, I feel like I need to give some sort of warning that you might almost have to go with one of those smaller manufacturers. Now, there are some main companies. Frame One is great. I used to use Hitbox's Smashbox, and Junk Food that I mentioned earlier makes the LBX, but all of these are notoriously sold out. In fact, while I was writing this, all three were sold out. Your best bet is to ask folks in your local Smash scene where they got theirs from. And there's a good chance there's a local controller modder nearby or someone creating a startup company. Otherwise, keep your eye out when these go on pre-order and you'll be able to snag one. For my money, I use the Empress Nano for fighting games and the Rana Digital for Smash. Both use keyboard switches, and I like how tactile they are because of it. Like I said though, it's not one size fits all. Think about what works for you. This isn't an ad, I just like weird controllers with too many buttons on them. And maybe, after watching this, maybe you do too. Thanks for checking this out. Wanna reiterate, 
None of this was an ad or sponsored. I just like the products that I use and I think boxes, rectangles, leverless, whatever you want to call them, I think they're all cool. If you like this video, maybe check out Melee Doubles with an Among Us Mafia Who's the Traitor kind of twist. One of the players in that actually uses a custom rectangle that's built into a Wii Fit balance board. It's not important to the video at all, it's just a segue.